Well, we begin in the same place that I've begun each of the previous four weeks with the thought that the Bible, this entire story from creation to the recreation at the end of time of God's connection with uh, humanity, the story is also our story, that we will see that reflection of our own lives in, in the huge biblical account of the whole of time. We will find ourselves in it. And today uh, we're picking up on two topics of of the way the Holy Spirit enables community and to give us an understanding of community. But I want to start, first of all, from the community aspect. For a lot of us, um, over the last 18 months, church has been like this. This image of a computer screen uh, with a cup of coffee. Uh, we've been fortunate at times to be able to come back into church and then we had times of isolation again and separation and for some it's still the case that they can't yet gather with us um, and it's it doesn't feel right does it, it for, a, for a period of time it felt quite comfortable I have to say I, I quite liked those Sunday mornings particularly as I'd already done the work prior in the week and we created the videos and we put them out and then on a Sunday morning to be able to sit down with a cup of coffee and and relax in a service it felt comfortable but actually after a while I'm not entirely sure it was at all satisfactory and I'm so pleased we're moving back towards normal and I hope we can keep staying safe so that we can keep meeting and um, the thing is we, we like to get together don't we, we, we st- Zoom is never going to do it for one thing, I find it hugely on the ice strain, but it just doesn't work, does it? To, you, and we've discovered that actually we'll put effort into it. Over the last two Sundays, or two pre, prior Sundays, we've had the picnics in the garden. And now that has required faith and effort, because as I mentioned, um, each time it has rained as we started. But the rain stopped, and we had some lovely times together. And Jill and I have been looking at our diaries, and we're very happy to open the garden up again next Sunday. So, and uh, we'll get an email out this week confirming some things about church life again, and, um, and we'll put that invitation out there as well. But we like to gather. We're seeing already some of the church groups are really wanting to reform, and the walking groups are doing so uh, with limitations. They, they, they loved coming back to the hub and to have a cup of coffee before they went or a cup of tea as they finished. Um, but they found a way to do that safely and they're making some teas and coffees and, 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 or bringing their own and they're drinking them in the car park. Because we, we have this thing in us that wants not just to do a bit of exercise or not just to sit in the garden and have a picnic, but we want to be together. We see that in the community hub, which was set up to help with isolation and there within weeks we were getting 40, 50, 60 people wanting to come to a place they've never been to before who longed for companionship who longed for community there's something in us our young people I'm sure would love to be able to go to camp they haven't been able to go to camp for two years that time when they can have some really good, close uh, fun together, get to know each other in ways that you can't do in a you know, 45 minute session on a Sunday morning in Jude's Club or spending a week together under canvas where you certainly find your strengths and weaknesses, don't you? But um, these are things that we love to do. We love the idea of just gathering with friends inviting maybe guests as we're doing in our garden for the picnics to just spend some time together we do like being with friends in a bit of more intimate way and, and sharing some food and uh, he's really looking forward in this image isn't he to having some of that roast beef that's just passing by his plate uh, and equally we like to get together with our family and, and eat together and so often now in modern life that's in an extended size kitchen and eating in the kitchen which is not surprising that that outreach method that we've been 
using for our mission here of gardens, dining rooms and kitchens of, of places where we can have uh, of environments it doesn't have to be in a garden, it doesn't have to be in a dining room it doesn't have to be in a kitchen, but environments that are welcoming and attractive to a guest like a barbecue, you can just turn up and it's light conversation or a picnic or a dining room where you, you're getting closer as, with someone as a friend or, or sharing a, a meal in a, in a pub with some others places that are a bit closer, more intimate and that kitchen thing where once we're in the family we muck in together and we sort things out together if, is it dawned on you that actually we're building community, growing community by using community it's attractive people like to gather with people and what they see when a church does it is they see something attractive and we, we had that in the reading that we've had this morning from Acts 2, that very early stage after the Holy Spirit has impacted the disciples and they're starting to gather and we hear in Acts 2, we hear this every day, they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. When we talk about something being attractive, the first thing we might think about is, uh, well, it's pleasing to the eye. But actually, it draws you in. That's, it attracts. So when we, when we might say of a, of a church community, uh, if we were to use the word attractive, actually, that's the point. That we attract a community is a big, we might not realise how big community is of what we are, and you may not even have noticed the, the, the wording on the little open sign that we stick outside that I just remembered this morning and put back out because we've, we're not yet serving refreshments, so I don't want to give a hint that we are serving refreshments. But on that sign, it says, St. Jude's, a church with a heart for community. That's been sitting outside our door for the last two or three years. And I think it's true. We, we've loved to gather as, uh, for things like uh, bring and share lunches or barbecues in the garden. We've loved to gather at the community hub. We've loved to gather in church. We love to gather together after church to share some stories about our lives of the prior week when we were having teas and coffees and we will come back to those in time. But there's, there's something about, it's not just a slogan, it's something about the, the heart of who we are has a heart for community and we also have a heart for the wider community. It is always, in my mind that has always had a double meaning. A church with a heart for community. And I think it's attractive. I don't, I don't mean in terms of we use a slogan and people are going to go oh lovely let's go to that church but it says something of who we are and it should say the same of every church the thing is uh, we've struggled haven't we over the years with churches as to what a church is and when Jesus said to Peter I, I tell you that you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church it's a, something we've spoken about several times. That Greek word behind church is ecclesia. And it, it just doesn't mean what people think it means today. There's a couple of things when Jesus says this. I tell you that you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church. Firstly, the word itself. It's the word that got um, uh, Tyndale into real trouble when he was uh, translating the Bible from the original Greek and Hebrew into English back in the 16th century that eventually got him killed because he translated it as congregation it's a word about gathering in, in, the, in the secular Greek it was, it was the pulling together of the politicians for those big conversations it was an ecclesia it was a, it's always been a word that means something communal something together you think Jesus said when two or three of you gathered, I'm there too. Because he requires community. The Holy Spirit will act independently with all of us. 
but God's preference for some reason is community and here Jesus says and on this rock I will build my church well first of all he's talking about Peter and the beginning of, of that first community that's going to gather but the I will well we know that Jesus said I will be with you to the end of time and that the way that Jesus or God is with us at the end of time is by the Holy Spirit it's the Holy Spirit that will build the church which is why I want to move into thinking about the Spirit community, we like community we know that the church and the Spirit are linked uh, within the, the spoken word piece we had this morning they use this phrase, I, I, it really caught my eye, Paul plants churches but the Spirit grows communities. And I think it's absolutely true. Paul, when he, he wrote his letter to the Corinthians and, and spoke about, uh, I planted a polis watered but God grew it. It's the growing that is what the Holy Spirit enables. It's doing something about us communally. We see it in our year verse this year. In him you are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. It's about a community. It's the Holy Spirit doing that. But it's resonating with something in us. Because we see it secularly, we, we see people like to be together. I, I mean, different characters prefer different quantities of people, that's very true. Some people like a very small, select group of people, they don't like big crowds. Some people like big crowds. But all of us like having contact with someone else. We just do. It's like it's part of our spiritual DNA. And this COVID virus that's been around is, has really kicked that back, hasn't it? It's forced us to be separate. It's forced us to do something against our nature. The people who have struggled with the regulations, well, I, I'd like to suggest actually they're just following the way that they feel they're built. And we've all been asked to restrain how we feel to, to, for the sake of everyone else. Something in here, something in our hearts or our spirit or, how, or our physical structure that means that we want to be together. Paul had some fairly harsh words for the Galatians. We know that, don't we? You know, he has that phrase, you foolish Galatians. Um, the letter to the Galatians was the first letter that Paul probably wrote and it's very early in his ministry when he set off from Antioch with Barnabas they went through Galatia and after he finished that first journey it's probably the first letter he wrote and he has a, he has a shout at them but let's be fair on them you know, they hadn't had an alpha course they, they'd had this itinerant preacher called Paul come wandering through who has shared as much as he could and they're trying to get on with as much as they can but they were struggling but Paul said this to them are you so foolish after beginning by the means of the spirit are you now trying to finish by means of the flesh because Paul knew how crucial the Holy Spirit was to them not, not just for individual faith not just for individual motivation and discovering purpose and that sort of, but for them it was a letter written to a community all of Paul's letters are written to communities. They're all two groups of people, well, with the exception of like, the pastoral letters to Timothy. And, but the communal letters like Galatians, Ephesians, Corinthians, Thessalonians, they're to communities. And he knows that's where God is able to do his work most fully. And it's where we bizarrely are most comfortable when it's working right I came across this beautiful picture of um, a window in Liège Cathedral and uh, there are commonly used motifs to try and illustrate the Trinity and that's one of them it's of sort of three things combined into one thing I'm just looking up at our window have we got anything like that in ours? well we have either side of the, 
the, the trefoil shapes either side of the, the sort of shoulders of our stained glass windows. That, it's a common image used throughout Christendom to suggest something of God's character. And we are made in the image of God, aren't we? But the Holy Spirit gives us issues because we, we struggle with, well, our language doesn't help. And I mentioned at the beginning about Anselm of Canterbury, who back in the 11th century described that what we do is uh, faith-seeking understanding. We cannot explain the Trinity. There are some common errors that will be made, and um, I always forget which title goes with which, so I have written them down. One is what's called modalism, where God appears as three different people, i.e. not three at the same time. So God appeared as Jesus, God appears as the Holy Spirit, God, God appears as the Father. But of course that's, that's a big struggle when it comes to things like the baptism of Jesus, when all three are present at the same time. So modalism doesn't work. You can't, you can't say the Holy Spirit is... Jesus uh, or there's Arianism well that basically says that well um, Jesus, neither Jesus nor the Holy Spirit are fully God that they are something different um, people then start struggling to get right words to fit things but subordinationism that Jesus is subordinate to the Father these but it doesn't say that in the beginning of John's Gospel, does it? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So the Holy Spirit isn't subordinate to the Father either. Or adoptionism. Jesus only became divine as his baptism. That before that he was as fully human and normally human as you and I are. But not divine. And there is, a, there is a, a simple way of saying what the Trinity is, but it still doesn't help with the understanding. We still need faith to seek understanding. That first of all, God exists in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That each person, in inverted commas, is fully God. And that there is only one God. You can see why Anselm came up with this phrase, can't you, that that is about faith seeking understanding because we cannot square that circle we can simply accept it on faith based on what is observed based on not just what scripture tells us but on what we experience we know that Jesus is not present in this room but we sort of know the Holy Spirit is And trying to find a way to understand that. And Paul struggled in understanding that as well, which is why it took him 14 years from meeting Jesus to starting his first journey to try to figure it. In many ways, Paul did define the doctrine of Christianity. And it's, for me, what, what is crucial here is, is why are we feeling like we need community? Why is that attractive? Well, it goes back to in whose image are we made? We're made in the image of God. Male and female he made them, we're told back in Genesis. And God lives in community. Quite what that three in one is, I can't tell you. Other than there are three identifiable persons of God, who are each God, and there is only one God. But you could look at a congregation, I'm not even going to use the word church now, you could look at a community and say, well, that community is multiple individual people, but they form one community. Maybe that's why sat in our hearts is this desire for people, because actually we're made in God's image. Which is why I have a real issue with this virus. I'm not saying the virus is evil. I'm not saying that at all. It has absolutely no conscience. It has no thought processes. And it's causing chaos. 
I'm not saying however it was created was done with any evil intent but it's coming out of a broken world a world that was not designed by God to have viruses a world that in its true natural state should be as I mentioned last week should be the supernatural state that we look forward to in heaven the virus shouldn't be here but one of the things it is doing it's destroying what God created it's destroying community which is why we have to strive to restore community safely it's important step by step we're going to have to find ways of living with this thing because it's how we're built we like meeting people and it's in that that God can work through the Holy Spirit so that we can be attractive to those who don't know him so they can be pulled back into the family and have their own story in amongst the story.